Woody in Virginia. Welcome to the Glenn Beck program. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Beck, I have a lot of respect for you and your show. Loved it for decades now. Thank um, you. But I think, you're, I think you've contradicted yourself some here in, All right. your, in your statements from a few moments ago. You've been t- I've heard you talk about the Holocaust mm-hmm. and what if, uh, instead of just quietly uh, obeying authority, um, the Jews in Germany and Europe would have fought back. And while I agree, I, I abhor violence. Having served, I understand what it means to take a life and violence. But whether or not you're in a march, if if we don't defend ourselves now and vigorously, um, I fear we're on the start of the long, dark night. So I the modern progressive. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I don't feel I'm not equating the modern progressive left with, you know, uh, Stalin and Pol Pot and Hitler. But the start of all of these movements, be it Gentile or Marxism, fascism or communism, always, always historically end up the same way. Mm-hmm. And if we don't hold our ground now, I can see six million conservatives in re-education camps in the next 10 years. So I could tell you, Woody, that I could play that scenario out and arrive exactly at the same place. Here's where I think we disagree. You're talking about a march. What is the goal of a march? It dep- depending on the march itself, the goal of a march is to support an ideal, a cause, or a person. In this case, the march would support the MAGA movement and the president. Okay. And is um, it is and, it just to – is it so are you just sending one message to one man, or is there a reason why it's very, very public? There's a reason it's a public. The message is meant for the entire nation, and I, and I understand and agree with your philosophy that the media – if we use violence to counter violence, the media is going to portray our side or my side, the conservative side, in the worst light. Yeah, they're going to do it that anyway. But... It, that's that's my point. It, it would make it would be different if the media were portraying things fairly. It doesn't matter if we fight back or not. I read the headlines this morning and yesterday, mm-hmm. and they all imply that it was the MAGA, mm-hmm. the Trump supporters, the conservatives that started the violence. Right, and if so you're, if you and so the, the, the here's the, here's the problem, the March. Now, I'm talking about a march. I'm not talking about defending your country. I'm not uh, talking about defending uh, yourself uh, as an individual. Somebody comes on my property and they wish me ill will or my family ill will. I am going to defend myself and my family, and I will do it as violently as necessary. Um, So I, I want you to know I'm separating things out, and we're talking specifically about marches. A march, the reason we do marches is to send a message to those people in America, not the press, not to anybody else, but to get someone's heart to change, to see that and go, huh, that's not what I thought it was. When that happens, that's a successful march. Now, the media has done everything they can to the Tea Party and everybody else for a long time. But we made a huge impact. And if you don't believe me, uh, talk to Barack Obama. Barack Obama uh, started his, his own organization to bring down Donald Trump because of the Tea Party. He said the Tea Party was so effective at at harming his agenda and slowing them down. That's why you get so much pushback on it. But it is critical that the, the marches remain peaceful always. And it, it requires great discipline. But it's not because you're going out. You, you should not march if you're angry and, you know, you just want whatever. No, you're doing a march for the reason to change people's hearts to show support for something that you believe in. And what you believe in is the Constitution and rule of law and goodness and that America is great and can be made even greater than it has been in the past. That won't be the message if you strike back. If you don't and somebody strikes you, that will be seen. And Americans don't like bullies. They don't like what's happening with BLM. Look at the look at the ratings of, of BLM. They were in the 70s. Their approval ratings were in the 70s.
just a few months ago. They're in the 20s or 30s now. Why? Because Americans started to see that they were violent, even though the press the entire time said they weren't. Everyone in the press has been doing the opposite of what they've done to the Tea Party and to MAGA supporters. But look what's happening. Look you're, at just... Making a, go ahead. You're making excellent points, and overall, I agree with you. I think you're, be, you're, you're being a little bit naive, though, sir, when you think <laughs> that out of, out of 100,000 to 300,000 people going to a march, a lot of those people aren't driven to the march because of the anger of what they're seeing happening to the Constitution and the nation. Um, I've been to marches, and sometimes I've been angry. Sometimes I haven't been. I just do not, and I don't think this is a point we can agree on, even though I have a world of respect for your position and your points. At, when it comes to it at a time when the nation is literally, I believe, in peril. I do, too. When you're at a march demonstrating and, and peacefully demonstrating and cleaning up like we did the last time on the I mall. Know. We left less trash than when we got there. I know. If we are violently attacked, then we have to defend ourselves. Unfortunately, we cannot be, we cannot count on the police department in Washington D.C. to defend us. I they don't won't. think I Woody and I I respect you, and you know I could be wrong on this. This is just my opinion, but I've read a lot of Martin Luther King, Gandhi, and Jesus, and uh, I don't think it's naive. If you think you are more angry at injustice than those black people in the South that had fire hoses opened up and dogs sicked on them. Uh, I think you're mistaken. I think that was a that was years and years and years of taking it. And that's what Martin Luther King said. We have to take it to be able to conquer it. Uh, and I know you're not suggesting a Malcolm X approach, but he was the opposite. Swing back.